time we talk about the parabola. This time we're going to talk about the conic sections of a circle and an ellipse. And then finally, in the last lesson, we're going to talk about the hyperbola. Let's jump into talking about the circle and the ellipse. A circle is a set of all points in a plane that are at a fixed distance from the center. We have a standard equation that has the center of the circle at h, k, and our radius is r. When I look at the circle equation, x squared plus y squared minus 16x plus 14y plus 32 is 0. Our goal is to find the center and the radius and then use that information to graph the circle. We need to put it into standard form and currently it is not. What I'm going to do first is put all of my x values together, all of my y values together, and set it equal to the constant. So I'm rearranging my terms and then subtracting 32 from both sides. Then what I need to do is complete the square twice. We're going to complete the square twice, once with the x values and once with the y values. So I'm going to focus just on x squared minus 16x first. So remember to complete the square. I'm going to take that middle term, take this middle term, divide it by 2, and square it. That gives me negative 8 squared, and this negative 8 is going to be the factored form for us. And negative 8 squared is 64. So I want to add 64 to both sides. Then I'll look at my y value here, and I'm going to take 14 divided by 2 and square it. That is the same as 7 squared. The 7 is the value with which I'm going to factor. And 7 squared is 49. So I'm going to add 49 to both sides. Now I'm able to factor my x values and my y values and then combine like terms on the right. I already know that I'm going to use x minus 8 from right here. So x minus 8 squared and then y plus 7 squared equals 81. We're almost into standard form. Notice that we're going to need our subtractions here. I already have my subtraction with x minus 8, rewriting y plus 8 as y minus a negative 7, and then rewriting 81 as a square as well gives me 9. Therefore, we have h and k. Our h value is 8, and our k value is negative 7, so our center is at 8, negative 7, and our radius then is 9. And we can utilize decimals to also help us graph. When looking at an ellipse, I can tell the difference between the ellipse standard form versus the, the circle standard form because the ellipse is set equal to 1 for both. Okay. An ellipse is the set of all points in a plane, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points, which is our foci, is constant. The center of an ellipse is the midpoint of the segment between the foci. So our uh, center is somewhere in here. If our major axis is horizontal, so our ellipse is wide left and right versus major axis vertical, meaning we are in up and down long ways. So if my major axis is horizontal, this also means that my minor axis, so the shorter axis, is vertical. So my short one is vertical. Similarly here, my minor axis is horizontal. So the short distance is the horizontal way. If my major axis is horizontal, we will utilize the function or the formula x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared where a is bigger than b and they both have to be greater than zero. 
Similarly, notice where my A changes with the major axis vertical. So the larger value is underneath the Y value. And then it gives us how we can identify the vertices, the Y intercepts, and the foci given there. It's asking us to find the standard equation of an ellipse with vertices at negative 5, 0, and 5, 0. So if I'm given the vertices, notice I'm given the A value here, and I'm given the vertices of the X value. So therefore, I already know that my A value has to be 5. We know the foci. Notice that my foci is giving me the x value, giving me the x value here, which is my c value. So c is equal to 3. Then we want to graph the ellipse. Again, our vertices are negative 5, 0, and 5, 0. So that gives me my a value of 5. And my foci are negative 3, 0, and 3, 0. So my c value is 3. When we're writing the standard form, we need an a and a b. Notice here that we can find what our b value is by substituting c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So c squared is equal to 3 squared. Uh, 3 squared equals 5 squared minus b squared. Or 9 equals 25 minus b squared. 9 minus 25 gives me negative 16, but when I divide both sides by negative 1, I have 16, so b would be 4. Okay. I know that this is a ma major axis horizontal, so my larger value has to go under my x. So x squared over 5 squared plus y squared over 4 squared or simplifying x squared over 25 plus y squared um, equals 1. Like y squared over 16 equals 1. Now that I know what my b value is, I know that my y-intercepts are 0, negative 4 and 0, positive 4. I've po uh, posted them here on my equation and I can also plug in my foci since my foci were negative 3, 0 and 3, 0. So these two values we could also include as our foci. Let's look at finding for the ellipse 9x squared plus 4y squared is 36. Find the vertices and the foci, then draw the graph. Well, I know I need to put this into standard form somehow, but I need to have, it have a value in my denominator. So what I'm going to do is multiply everything by 136 and because I need this value to be a 1 and I need these to be divided by something and when I look at 9 4 and 36 um, by multiplying everything by 136 I'll, I'll have that arrangement that I need multiplying everything by 136 I'll have 9x squared over 36 plus 4y squared over 36 and 36 over 36 Simplifying, I have x squared over 4, y squared over 9 as equal to 1. Because my larger value is underneath the y squared, I know that this is going to be a vertical ellipse. So it's going to go the large way up and down. I also want to replace these with 2 squared and 3 squared because now I know my a value is 3 and my b value is 2. Substituting those into our uh, formulas then, our foci, excuse me, our vertices are 0, a and 0, negative a, so 0, 3 and 0, negative 3. So here are our vertices. Our foci are the c value. We don't have the c value, we just have a and b. So utilizing c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared, I'll have c squared is equal to 9 minus 4, or the square root of 5 when we simplify. So our foci are 0 square root 5 and 0 negative square root 5. And our x-intercepts are negative b0 and b0, so negative 2, 0, and um, 2, 0. So our foci could probably be somewhere about here and here. Now, not all the time 
will our ellipse be at the center? We can utilize the same formulas that we did previously. However, we're going to have HK identify where the center of our, foci, of our uh, ellipse is, and then our vertices and foci have to be solved just slightly differently. For the ellipse, 4x squared plus y squared plus 24x minus 2y plus 21 is 0. Let's find the center, the vertices, and the foci, and then draw the graph. First of all, I'm going to rearrange these so that I have all my x values together because I'm most likely going to need to complete the square. So 4x squared plus 24x plus y squared minus 2y equals negative 21. So starting to build what we need here. I also see looking at my x values here that they are divisible by negative, or excuse me, divisible by positive 4. So when I divide them by 4, I'll have x squared plus 6 x, we're leaving some space. There's nothing I can do with y squared minus 2y, so I'm just leaving it as it is. Now we need to take uh, positive 6 to complete the square, divided by 2 and square it. This gives me 3 squared, which is 9. And this is the part, the 3, that we're going to need when we um, when we factor. So this gives me uh, 9 here. However, I'm going to need to take 4 times 9, which is 36, and add it to this side because we took out that 4 to begin with. So if I'm adding 9 to the left, I'm actually adding 36 to the left if I were to redistribute that 4. And then when I'm looking at my y value, I'm going to take negative 2 divided by 2 and square it. This gives me negative 1 squared. Again, this is the part I'm going to use when I factor is equal to positive 1. Notice I didn't multiply anything on the outside, so just adding 1 to the right is fine. Factoring then, I'll have 4 times x plus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 16 when I add all of these values together. I need this to be a 1. I need that 16 to be a 1 utilizing our standard form. So I'm going to multiply everything by 1 16th. When I multiply by 1 16th, I'll have 4 over 16, which reduces to 4. I'll also have, when I multiply to my second binomial squared, I'll have 1 over 16, and all this will be equal to 1. All right. Finding our center then, just rearranging since they need to be in the form of subtraction. I have x minus a negative 3 and y minus 1 in order to have them in uh, subtraction form. I know then my h value. I know then my k value. Because my larger value is underneath y squared, this tells me that we're going to have a vertical ellipse. So this 4 squared, this 4 will be my a. And my b is going to be the 2. Our center is at hk, so our center is at negative 3, 1. Our vertices are h, utilizing the formulas on the previous page, k plus a, and h, k minus a, or negative 3, 5, and negative 3, 3. So we see our vertices here are here and here. Our foci come from H and then K plus C and then H, K minus C. I don't know what C is, but since I do know A and B, we can utilize the C squared minus A squared minus B squared. So the square root of 12 or 2 square root 3 since the square root of 12 can simplify to 4 times 3 providing us with negative 3, 1 plus 2 square root 3, and 1 minus 2 square root 3, which are kind of an ugly decimal, so I've got them listed here as our foci. 
And then finally, our endpoints of the minor axis. Our endpoints of the minor axis, again, are the short ones, so the left and the right of the short side. So our minor axis are these two points. And how we obtain those endpoints are negative 3 plus 2 and negative 3 minus 2. So negative 1, 1, and negative 5, 1. And that concludes our lesson on the circles and ellipses.